Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Colgate Palmolive India Limited Analyst Conference Call for the financial year 2023-2024. Please note that this conference call will include forward-looking statements and these statements are made on the basis of the company's views and assumptions as of this time and are not the guarantees of future performance. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. At that time, participants on webcast may click on the Ask a Video Question tab, which is enabled below the media player. Alternatively, you may also post your text questions on the Ask a Question tab available on your screen. Participants connected via telephone may enter star and one on their phone to ask a question. Today's session will begin with a brief presentation by the management of the company, sharing their views on the overall company's performance and strategy. And this will be followed by a question and answer session. I now hand over the proceedings to Ms. Sujata Nairi, Director, Commercial and Investor Relations at Colgate Palmolive India Limited. Thank you and over to you. Thank you, Yashasri. Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Colgate Palmolive Analysis Meet for the financial year 23-24. Very happy to have all of you here. We will start this presentation with a brief presentation from Jacob and Prabha. This would then be followed by a Q&A session. Before we start, I'd just like to point out that the statements here may have some forward-looking statements, and we have included a safe harbor about it in our presentation as well. I will now hand over to Prabha for her opening remarks and presentation. Thank you, Prabha, and over to you. Thank you, Sujata. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and thank you for joining us. Uh, it's been about, I think, since August of last year, since we met at the Brand Days, and Jacob and I are very excited to talk you through uh, the results of this quarter. Uh, this is the structure of what we're going to cover, uh, really a quick update of our performance, uh, the important point of what is our view of oral care and the forward view uh, of the category. What's our strategy to take on this category and lead it to the next level? And then a look at our financial performance. So diving straight in, uh, the last time that we spoke, we had laid out the three principles on which we run our business, which is that our effort will be to grow our top line, uh, strengthen the equity that we have, which is already exceedingly strong, uh, and to make that even better and to take uh, simplification to the next level. And as we go through this, we will talk through all three of these uh, parameters. Starting first with our performance, uh, I'm very pleased to report that in the latest quarter, we have delivered a 10.7% domestic growth, a good double-digit growth in a, in a good quarter for us. And this takes actually our full-year performance to near double-digit, which is 9.5%, and uh, the highest performance that we've delivered in, in the last little while, uh, and really a testament to the strength of this uh, organization. This comes along with an excellent performance on margin, EBITDA margin strengthening from the 29.8% levels of FY23 uh, to 33.7% margin of FY24. And in the latest quarter, we have delivered the highest margins ever uh, at 359 uh, I know that we have a lot of discussion around margin in this company, and uh, the way we look at margin is actually to see it as the ability of this company to drive performance, which is linked to the strong equity that we have the privilege to run, and linked also to the financial discipline and the rigor that we have on managing all lines uh, of the PNL. And starting, of course, with the strong equity that I've already mentioned a couple of times uh, in the very first few minutes of this call, this is the strength of the Colgate brand equity. Uh, the numbers, the, the letters that you see in brackets indicate a significance over the previous time period. So when you see the column 61% top of mind awareness in 2022 going to 64% top of mind awareness in 2023 and you see an A next to it, it says that the 64 is actually significantly better than the 61. And similarly, the 67% is significantly better than the 64 and the 61. Uh, and top of mind, of course, being the measure that is really critical to all FMCG brands, given that most FMCG purchase is a system one purchase in the moment. 
when you ask a consumer, when I say toothpaste, what is the first brand that comes to your mind? 67% of them say Colgate or a brand of Colgate. Uh, commensurate with that increase in top of mind awareness, we also see an increase in the brand of first choice. So the same question of what would be your first brand of choice, a little bit more considered as the heading would suggest, a little bit more considered view of what would you buy in oral care and 61% of consumers say that they would buy Colgate, again significantly up over the previous couple of years. And the last one, which is perhaps the most important uh, functional measure of category performance, uh, oral care expertise is now at 78%, uh, again, significantly up over the previous couple of years. And all of this culminates in a measure that we call North Star. It's a cumulative equity measure, which measures equity on three parameters of how visible are you, how distinctive are you, and what is your emotional bond. And you can see that the strength of this brand is is incredible and what is really heartening to see is actually the movement even against a very very strong start from a simplification lens there have been really three areas that we focused on one of course is the use of data to make sure that the decisions that we are taking are faster are better and are more uh, in tune with what is happening in the market and to that end we have de deployed an advanced marketing mix module that allows us to keep modifying how we spend our advertising money. Colgate is actually one of the, if not the most advertised FMCG brand uh, in the country. And making sure that we juice that expenditure to drive growth uh, is critical to us. And this market mix modeling uh, helps us to get better and better at doing that. Uh, we now have an AI-led planogramming, uh, which I've referenced before, but goes from strength to strength in terms of ensuring that our availability in stores, particularly self-service stores, is exactly as we believe it should be in that store in terms of share of shelf, in terms of ensuring full on-shelf availability, uh, ensure, uh, in terms of assuring planogramming in terms of proximity of A to B, et cetera. And the measurement of that is really getting better and better and giving us significant insight, which allows us to keep moving this forward uh, at a rapid pace. And of course, simplifying supply chain is one of the reasons why we are able to continuously deliver uh, continued margin improvement as we suck out every non-value adding cost in the system, allowing us to both invest back in product and packaging quality, as well as invest back in significantly increased advertising. Advertising for the year has gone up by 20% and for the quarter has gone up by about 18%. And this is something that we're committed to doing, uh, once again linked back to the equity of this uh, incredible brand. Coming back to oral care, and I want to step back for a moment and just remind you of the context of oral care uh, in India. Uh, the average toothpaste consumption in India continues to be under-indexed to uh, any comparable country. And we compare to Philippines as being the nearest, uh, perhaps, to our market. And with that comparison, we are at 0.6 index on a total India level broken up as 0.7 in urban and 0.5 in rural. So significant headroom opportunity for us, even if we approach the consumption levels of Philippines. And then if you take that to the, you know, to the extreme of the Brazil type consumption levels, then you're saying we are at about 0.33 index in India. And so we could potentially have an oat toothpaste market that is three times the volume size of the market that we have currently. And why is that? It's because of the numbers, two numbers that you see below. Only 20% of urban households brush twice a day. So uh, anytime you visit your dentist, they would tell you that you should minimum be brushing twice a day. Uh, and of course, 55% of rural households don't brush uh, daily. And these two opportunities, moving them is actually a fundamental pillar of our strategy, which we'll talk about shortly. When we take a look at the toothbrush category, uh, to, there's one fact on the on the slide there, which is 78% of toothbrushes are sold below 40 rupees. The other fact is that on average, a toothbrush gets replaced every nine months. 
uh, where again uh, the dentist would have you believe that you need to replace your toothbrush ideally every three months. Uh, and therefore the opportunity to both move the frequency of replacement as well as driving up the, the premiumization or moving people to better quality toothbrushes becomes a huge opportunity for the company. Uh, and why do we believe that we are the best placed to move all of these numbers and why are these numbers important to us? Because of numerous set of facts. And uh, I know that I labored the point on these facts, but these are good facts. And so I am going to labor the point on the fact that we are India's number one oral care brand by far. We are the India's most loved oral care brand, again, by far. Uh, we are the most penetrated oral care brand existing in nine out of 10 households. We are the most recalled oral care brand. We discussed that already and the most consistent considered oral care brand as well. Uh, also, our relative strength in the category is exceedingly high. Uh, and we can look at this from three parameters. Firstly, what is our relative size versus the number two player in the category? So in the toothpaste category, we are three times the number two player in uh, the toothpaste category. And in the toothbrush uh, category, we are one and a half times or near one and a half times uh, the number two player. Then if we move our attention to a portfolio play and where does Colgate play, uh, the top line and the red dots really indicate that we play across every benefit segment that is important to consumers, whether it is strength of teeth, fresh breath, sensitivity, pain, uh, gums, it uh, really doesn't matter what the segment is, we play across all toothpaste segments. And you can link that back to the oral care expertise that we've already looked at. And every other player in this category actually plays in one, maybe two uh, segments. When we then double click that into do we play across price bands, the answer is also yes. And we are the only company that actually plays with our portfolio, starting from a 10 rupee CST all the way up to our most premium brands, the most therapeutic brands that are available through the professional oral care channel. We play across all price points. So this combination of a starting size, a portfolio that plays across all categories, and across all price points sets us up beautifully to make sure that we are driving this category forward. So that brings me really to our strategy and I've spent a lot of time talking about oral care and this is a strategy that I hope uh, is very familiar because we've now been talking about it for quite a few quarters but I'll go through it once again anyway. Our first critical job is to lead toothpaste category growth. This is both our privilege and our responsibility with all of the data that we've discussed so far to make sure that this category is growing faster. And therefore, 1A, if you were, of our strategy is to grow toothpaste category volume. The second within that 1B is really for us to grow to our core within that, which is the three brands of Colgate Strong Teeth, Max Fresh, and Active Salt. Our second job is to premiumize through science-based superior innovation, all the words being really important. And we'll talk about it, how this comes to life through total, through visible white, and through thinking on therapeutics uh, that we are now deploying. Our third leg is to drive growth in toothbrushes and in devices. Like I said, we are about one and a half times the, the second player in the toothbrush category, getting ever stronger uh, as we deploy some very exciting plans. And the last leg, which allows us to say that, yes, we are an oral care company, and yes, we are the oral care expert, but there is opportunity for us in diversification and to leverage the great equities that we have outside of India and, of course, the palm olive equity in India. And for a change today, I'm actually going to start by talking about personal care before I come back into the world of oral care, because we're quite excited about the work that's happening uh, on palm olive. A quick background on Palmolive before I go there. Uh, Palmolive's equity built over 73 years in India. 60% of our target audience is aware of the brand. This is something that with the plethora of new age brands that are coming into categories, this is the kind of awareness that would be very, very coveted. Uh, and we are very lucky to have a brand that has such latent equity. Uh, our strategy on Palmolive is to play in cleansing, body wash and hand wash. And that's really the focus of where we play. Uh, the body wash category, 
sub 3% penetration all India, but growing rapidly as consumers look to get better and better and more premium experiences. The category grows at a CAGR of anywhere between 30 to 40%, depending on, on when you look at it, and presents a huge opportunity for us, given that we start from a relatively small position. Uh, this is a category where you know growth is there for, for the taking. And what we have in our arsenal is really a global portfolio and technology to support superior products delivered to consumers delivering superior experiences. Starting with what we've done just a, a few weeks ago, which is the launch of three new variants on Palmolive, three exceedingly well-researched variants which deliver a supreme sensorial experience. Uh, communicated or backed now with brand new communication, which we'll just talk about in, in one moment. I feel the wind Draw me in Feels like a golden away Natural aromas to help you slow down. Savor the feeling with Palmolive showers. So the reason to be for Palmolive is really to encourage our consumers that in the stress and the hurry and the number of to-do lists that we have and fighting of traffic and stress and pollutants, to just maybe take a moment in that shower or bathing moment to slow down and to enjoy the sensorial experience that is Palmolive. Uh, within uh, this is what we have in play currently. Uh, like I've mentioned before, we have the opportunity of a global portfolio to choose from. And as we go forward in subsequent quarters, we will see new things coming in from our global portfolio. And we always remain in conversation on relevant inorganic uh, growth opportunities. So with that, I want to pivot back to uh, to the oral care category and talk about leading toothpaste category growth. And really, the focus is going to be on first on the first part of driving category growth, where our efforts have been in the area of moving that 20% number of urban brush twice a day to being higher than that. Uh, and we'll show the communication and then talk about it. देश के करोड़ों घरों में दिन मीठे के साथ खत्म होता है टूथपेस्ट के साथ नहीं अपने परिवार को कैविटी से बचाएं ब्रश टुनाइट कोलगेट द्वारा दंत हित में जारी launched uh, during Diwali last year. I hope most of you, if not all of you, have had a chance to see this campaign. It's very, very simple insight, which is that as Indians, we love our sweets. A lot of sweets get eaten after dinner. Then you go to sleep having eaten sweets without brushing your teeth, which is a surefire recipe for oral health issues uh, and therefore the exhortation to brush at night. Uh, of course, just moving consumer behavior, as we've discussed, is not easy. It takes time. And it's also not about us just putting one piece of advertising on air and assuming that it's a magic bullet. So it is about creating awareness, as we have done here, ensuring that we're contextual in the moment of purchase. So the things that you see on the left were all the activations that were done around Diwali in and around the, the suite locations and continue to be done now. And then to make sure that we continue to remind topically, uh, and there's an example here from the IPM. Gujarat ki team and Gujarat ki jalebi, dono saras che. Delhi ki ras malai to saalo se fans ka dil jeet rahi hai. Garma garam match or thandi Punjabi lasse. Zuba pe Mumbai or hath me puran poli. Sweet pongal for Chennai, sweet victory. Or meri parfi bhi ready. Kolkata ki ras gulle ko koi takka nahi de sakta. Jab ke chokke hai aur pinni. Oye hoye 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 hoye. Jeet ke baad meethe ka maza lijiye. Par raat ko Colgate se brush bhi kijiye. Colgate dwara dhan khitme jari. So a 
contextual add for every single match with every single combination of teams uh, that has gone out and obviously at the appropriate moment because this does play in the second match of IPL which is usually about the time that uh, dessert is being thought of and this all of this above the line activity is also supported by very strong on ground uh, activities which include a strong home to home program and underpinning this uh, and I keep coming back to this because it's really critical to the Colgate company is our mission of making sure that we are improving the oral health of everyone in this country and the flagship program that we have under that is really our Bright Smiles Bright Futures program which has been running now is in its fifth decade goes to schools at grassroots level and teaches the basics of oral care brushing the right way of brushing brushing twice a day saying no to tobacco ensuring that you replace your toothbrush and making sure that you have the that right nutrition leads to right oral health in its 50 plus years uh, it has reached 176 million children uh, and is perhaps one of the large reasons why toothpaste and toothbrush in this country have universal penetration in the last year, uh, we have done about uh, we have added about 5.2 million children who have been reached through this program, and through the coming year, we have a commitment to reach another 10 million children. Currently operational in eight states, along with partnership from various state governments and other organizations, we are looking to expand this program to closer to 10 to 12 states in this uh, financial year. A critical program which has long-standing and consistent commitment and this is the kind of commitment that we intend to put behind brushing at night uh, in terms of the above the line activities that you just saw so I move from 1A to 1B and talk about our flag from our flagship program to our flagship brand which is Colgate Strong Teeth uh, we had relaunched Colgate Strong Teeth with a superior formulation last year this is the uh, only market standard toothpaste which has the benefit of arginine technology. And just for me to repeat myself, arginine technology works towards working with uh, the bacteria in your mouth uh, to ensure that you can get stronger teeth. Uh, so a technology that actually has been patented by, uh, by Colgate and ha has been used and clinically proven to deliver stronger teeth. We've now taken that superior product and put it in a packaging that highlights the existence of arginine and the role of arginine. And we are taking this particular communication further and deeper into the, the rest of uh, India. Our second brand, Max Fresh, has also been the most successful brand in our portfolio over the last couple of years. Again, uh, underpinned by proprietary ultra-freeze technology, which is a flavor delivery system that delivers freshness like no other toothpaste does. Uh, again, has been revamped with new packaging graphics as well as more premium packaging, which includes a, a, a stand-up pack. Strong commercial support behind the key SKU of 20 rupees and continuous activation. This is a young, vibrant, uh, focused on young adults toothpaste uh, and therefore needs continuous engagement and excitement to keep it relevant and active. One example of which follows here. Doctor. खुद नींद में थे सुबह ब्रश नहीं किया होगा और कंटिन्यूटी का खपला पकड़ा गया Exactly. इसका मतलब समझे सारूं की? इसका मतलब इस एड का अच्छे से पोस्टमार्टम करना पड़ेगा बॉस। हाँ। पता तो चले कि इस एड में और क्या-क्या गड़बड़ी छुपी हुई है। दे। फोर्थ वॉल टूट दो। इस इन्वेस्टिगेशन में आप भी हमारा साथ दो। कोलगेट मैक्स फ्रेश के नए एड को ध्यान से देखो, गुफ़ाफ़ ढूँढो। और कमेंट करके बताओ ऐड का लिंक बायो में है बदले में कोलगेट मैक्स फ्रेश का हैंपर जीतने का मौका मिलेगा तो वेट क्या कर रहे हो जाओ ढूंढो ढूंढो 
कोलगेट मैक्स फ्रेश नींद भगाओ ताज की जगाओ always brings back happy memories and i move from colgate max fresh to uh, colgate active salt which is really the third part of our core portfolio once again uh, and i'm going to sound a little bit like a stuck record but this is really about the underpinning that we have that superior technology and superior products are the way to go in this category uh, so we have relaunched colgate active salt with a superior technology that actually is better at fighting painful dental problems or fighting the niggles uh, the dental niggles that various consumers have uh once again backed by a new communication that has tested in the top 15% of advertising and once again supported by a very strong commercial investment kursi pe kursi pe mujhe nahi baithna is kursi pe beta himmat kursi se dar mat dentist ka sujhaya naya colgate active salt जिसमें नमक है ये डेंटल प्रॉब्लम्स को शुरू होते ही रोक दे नया कोलगेट एक्टिव सोल्ट ना रहेगा दर्द ना रहेगा डर so salt is uh, has great belief amongst consumers in terms of the efficacy of it to solve many many uh, oral care problems and this is salt technology that has been incorporated into our new formulation and all of these efforts that have been going on on these brands for a while now have led once again to consideration for every one of our sub brands going up you saw the numbers for the overall colgate brand this is now broken up by sub brands and consideration for every one of our key sub brands continues to rise and obviously there is opportunity for us to do even more i move from this to the second pillar which is really science led premiumization and i want to start with colgate's globally number one brand which is colgate total uh if you talk to any colgate employee around the world and you ask them which toothpaste is do they think is the best uh the answer will most likely be colgate total uh this is an equity that has a lot of room in india uh it used to be a larger brand and has opportunity now to restore uh some of that size or at least all of that size uh in this brand what we have done so far is to make sure that we are building accessibility and driving trials we're sampling over 9 million units a year uh we have launched an access pack which is 80 grams at 80 rupees which is at roughly about 45 to 50% premium to the the market standard uh, toothpaste pricing which is really the sweet spot where we imagine that premiumization will take off and early results on this brand have been great so in the channels of the future between mt and ecom we are seeing market shares grow quite handsomely and the portfolio from an internal growth perspective grows at three times the the rate of the rest of our portfolio so lots of things for us to be happy about as far as colgate total is concerned The second leg of our premiumization has been whitening. This is a segment that we have created and we almost entirely own being by far the largest player in this segment. Our lead product here is a whitening toothpaste, Colgate Visible White. Uh a brand new media strategy on Visible White has just been rolled out. focusing really on uh ensuring that we use our very strong first party data, reach of influencers i beauty affinity consumers because this is actually a product that sits in the space between oral care and beauty because it is oral beauty uh first in uh, it is one of the first uh, whitening products in in the country and again doing exceedingly well this month or well at towards the back end of this month early in june we will also launch a first to the world whitening booster in the colgate franchise this is um, akin to a uh, a gel that you put on your teeth leave for a few moments and then wash off for whiter teeth uh, it is an in addition to adjunct to toothpaste not a substitute to toothpaste and therefore allows us to play in an opportunity which is beyond just the paste category and making sure that we continue to expand the portfolio of products that are available under visible white so visible white will have a toothpaste a premium toothpaste it already has a device that is available in uh, professional oral care channels it has uh, now will have a whitening booster gel 
and has a toothbrush. So a full portfolio of products to ensure that for those who are desiring whiter teeth, uh, there is something on offer for everyone. And I switch from oral beauty maybe to the other end of the spectrum, which is really the oral therapeutic business, that which your dentist recommends. 9% uh, of Indians go to a dentist every year. The 9% number itself is quite small. But when you multiply that into the population, obviously, it's a very, very large number of people who go to dentists. This driving the professional oral care channel has actually been a strategic business pillar for us. We are extremely fortunate that in our 87-year uh, history in this country, we've had the most tremendous relationships with the professional channel and continue to build on those relationships. We have about 2.5 million plus annual touch points of contacts with dentists. We have the first ever <clears throat> e-platform of direct-to-dentist, which is uh, Dentist First, and have 100 plus tie-ups with dental colleges, which is far in excess of uh, any other competitor. And this continues to be an area of focus and continues to be an opportunity for us. It grows very rapidly, uh, but the headroom on this is way more than the size that we are currently. I move then to the toothbrush category. Um, Big actions in the toothbrush category. Toothbrush is a slightly different category from toothpaste in that it doesn't get a lot of advertising. There is some, but it doesn't get a lot of advertising. So the heavy lifting on this category is done by having superior products with superior packaging that calls out on shelf. And whether that shelf is a modern trade shelf or a general trade shelf. Therefore, ensuring that we have taken one of our largest franchises, which is ZigZag, relaunching it to go back to its core equity of ZigZag bristles for interdental cleaning has led to some very stellar results. And of course, we have an opportunity to continue to uptrade our portfolio. And it is our intention to make sure that we are borrowing the the regimen story of a whitening toothpaste and a whitening toothbrush, a total toothpaste and a total toothbrush a PerioGuard toothpaste and a PerioGuard toothbrush and so on and so forth so that the regimen idea of how you use a toothpaste and a toothbrush uh, continues to get built. We're exceedingly happy with the uh, with the results that we are seeing on, on toothpaste or uh, toothbrush. Uh, and I want to talk about just one geography where we were losing to our competitors over the last little while, over the last two, three year period. And have over with these actions that we have taken in a very, very large geography, uh, restored market leadership, which I think is fantastic. And we will only go from strength to strength from here. I move now, having already covered personal care earlier, to uh, just a few of the enablers uh, that we've inputted. The first one, of course, starting with Shopper. Uh, one of the things about the oral care category is making it clearer to consumers the ladder between good, better, and best. Uh, and I think there's opportunity for us to keep driving that ladder and to that end, planogramming in modern trade and ensuring that there are some visible aids to help understand what is good, better and best uh, is something that we have now deployed in a, in a few stores. We're doing a pilot uh, with Reliance. Early results have been nothing short of spectacular. We're seeing a significant increase in premiumization and a significant ASP growth on uh, average selling price growth on toothpaste. And this is something that we are committed to. We will learn from this test pilot, make sure that we continue to evolve those learnings into better and better planograms. And this is one more area where we see this as being both a privilege and a responsibility because it is up to us to move how oral care looks on the shelf and how oral care is shopped. And now we are taking some very concrete steps uh, to make that happen. And that's that was in the brick and mortar universe, in the e-universe or the e-com universe. Uh, e-com continues to be a channel that is margin accretive, growth accretive, premiumization accretive for us. Uh, a critical channel in which we are very happy with our progress. Uh, and the work that was being done in terms of the content creation as well as the product portfolio that we sell on e-com is getting better and better. And there are lots of plans for us to continue to make this even more premium and even better as we pull apart the consumers who shop on e-commerce versus those who shop in brick and mortar. Of course, nothing is possible without making sure that we have organization and people priorities absolutely in the right place. They are the engine that drives this wonderful organization. 
uh, we are doing a lot of effort both with our own people in terms of making sure that we have the structures and the capabilities to win and take this entire business forward. Also bringing in talent from the external market in select positions so that we get the learnings from the outside world to marry with our very strong understanding within the company. Uh, lots of effort that is also being made, which is a core part of the DNA of this organization to make people feel cared for and included. These are two critical caring and inclusion being two of the key values of the, the Colgate system and something that we hold uh, very, very dear. And of course, it's the end of the year. And so uh, as a responsible corporate, we do release an ESG report. Uh, our ESG report will go out with our annual report in, in about a month. But lots of significant progress made on the key measures of waste, on recyclability, water usage, as well as BSBF. Uh, and I want to talk here particularly about recyclability. Uh, we are already in uh, mostly in recyclable packaging. We have the tech for recyclable toothpaste tubes, which we are deploying. And we are in the process of looking at circularity for those toothpaste tubes to ensure that recyclable is also recycled. And as we exit this year, we hope to have some very interesting news uh, to share in this space. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Jacob uh, to talk a little bit about the financial performance. Thank you, Prabha, and good morning, everybody. So financial strategy stays consistent, uh, driving sales volumes, and if you look, uh, go clockwise on that, driving margin expansion, which allows us to invest behind superior products uh, and uh, increase in advertising, optimizing overheads, uh, investing in brands, that's the advertising piece, and then therefore further leading to increase in sales, and vol sales uh, volume, and therefore delivering operating profit increases. So we are very pleased with the results for the quarter. Uh, you saw the numbers earlier, uh, 1481 crores for the quarter, 10.7% domestic growth. Margins continue to be very healthy, 250 bips expansion uh, during the quarter to 35.9 uh, and uh, profitability up 20% for the quarter. So if you look at it a uh, little bit longer term, uh, you can clearly see the momentum, 9.5% for the full year 24 with toothpaste double digit in the 9.5%. And you can see quarter on quarter, uh, we are accelerating the growth. The gross margin and EBITDA trends continue to be quite encouraging. So this is one question we've always been asked, is the company so obsessed with driving margin? So there are different ways to look at it. Uh, uh, one way is, of course, there is a pricing piece of it, which we normally calibrate with the inflation and the uh, increase in input costs. But we also have what we call the, a very robust funding the growth program where everybody in the company has got targets to deliver cost savings. And examples are savings from global synergies, packaging savings, uh, optimizing plant allocations between our four plants, automation at the plants, favorable product mix, import substitution. These are some examples of how we drive margin. Uh, this is unrelated to the pricing piece and is a big pillar or, on which our margin expansion rests. But we also use uh, some of it to invest back in the products through product superiority. Prabha talked about that we virtually re uh, relaunched and upgraded almost 100% of our portfolio. The packaging innovations you will continue to see uh, on tubes, next year we will be uh, on 100% recyclable tubes and we are transitioning as we speak and further investing uh, to uh, enhance the brand experience. So the 400 uh, bips increase that you saw during the year is a combination of uh, this plus of course some pricing. In terms of uh, con uh, investing behind the brands, advertising continues to be a key pillar. Uh, we've increased the advertising 20% year on year, or 125 BIPs to 13.5% levels. That's 760 crores in advertising that we spend during the year. And uh, importantly, the split of advertising, while we continue to support our brands, but we've also sp spent a sizable proportion of this on the brushing at night uh, a campaign that uh, you saw earlier in the presentation. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, funding the strategy, strengthening core, driving premiumization, building personal care. These are the 
traditional uh, areas where we continue to uh, support. Cash generation continues to be a very good story. Uh, so 12, 63 crores uh, going up to 15, 67 adjusted for the bank balances. Uh, and our return on capital employed is almost at the three, uh, three uh, digit numbers. Value creation over time, dividend, uh, we, uh, you saw yesterday we announced uh, additional dividend of 10, uh, uh, what we call special dividend on top of the 26 rupees uh, second interim dividend. That takes it to 58 rupees for the year. And our share price continues on an upward trajectory and I hope uh, some of you have uh, personally gained from this uh, movement. We've up 87% over the last one year reflecting the strength of our performance. And with that, I hand it back to Prabha. Yeah, so in conclusion, I just want to say that uh, we had laid out a strategy about 18, 20 months ago. Uh, we do believe that that is the right strategy for this company and we have deployed and executed that strategy quite well. Uh, we see results being delivered against that strategy and are quite happy with the progress of each of those pillars. Uh, and we can also see significant headroom of what more we can do to juice uh, each of those pillars. And I want to uh, end really with a two-part thought, the first part on oral care, which is that we are the leaders of the oral care category by far. Uh, and like I've said numerous times during this presentation, that's both a privilege and a responsibility for us to take this very important category forward in this country. We believe we have tremendous headroom to accelerate growth in this category, even despite the, the uh, universal penetration of the core formats of toothpaste and toothbrush. Diversification for us uh, is currently small and therefore represents a significant headroom opportunity for growth for the company as we look to take on some of the, the other categories that we believe we have a right to win. And we continue to be committed to the three things that really guide everything that we do, which is to drive top line growth ahead, competitive top line growth, strengthen what is already a very strong company and a very strong brand, and make sure that in this process, we continue to simplify to set ourselves up for future growth. Thank you again for your attention. I now hand it back to Sujata for the Q&A uh, section. Thank you, Prabha and Jacob. Uh, Yashasi, we can now start with the Q&A. Over to you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Participants present on webcast may click on the Ask a Video Question tab available on the screen. Please accept the join prompt on your screen and proceed to unmute your audio and video. Alternatively, you may also post your text questions on the Ask a Question tab available on your screen. Participants connected via telephone may enter star and one on their phone to ask a question. You're requested to use handset mode while asking a question. If you'd like to withdraw your question, you may enter star and two. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We'll take our first question from the line of Abnish Roy from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks and uh, congrats on very good uh, set of numbers, both on sales and margin. My first question is on personal care. Uh, so slide number 19 uh, mentions Protex and Sanex. So is that uh, an indication that uh, these two brands uh, have been kind of shortlisted and if any time frame? And second related question on personal care is on Palmolive. So we have seen uh, three new uh, variants being launched. We have seen mass media also. So my specific questions are there. Uh, are you focusing essentially on modern trade and e-commerce for uh, uh, Palmolive? Because you have mentioned that 1.2x uh, growth in uh, share of mind is there in modern trade. So is modern trade and e-commerce going to be the focus next two years here? Second is the category seeing huge disruption. It's a very low penetration, 3% penetration. But we are also seeing uh, one player come with powder to liquid and they have done generally quite well in powder to liquid. So given that disruption, focusing on premium, does it make sense? And last is uh, your sales growth was around 9.5% as a company, domestic sales growth in FI24. Uh, would Palmolive have grown at least 2x, 3x of that in FI24? So good morning, Abnish. Uh, it's nice to hear you uh, again. And uh, I'm going to take maybe the, the first two questions and leave the, the third one uh, to Jacob. 
on the palm olive brand uh, the our focus is not only modern trade actually uh, and I, i didn't touch upon the smile stores algorithm that we have which tells us what kind of assortment in what kind of stores in general trade and uh, that is something that we will use to make sure that palm olive is available in the right type of stores uh, in general trade with a 3% category penetration we do need to be careful as to where we place the product and so our intention will be to be modern trade gen- e-commerce and uh, judicious general trade the reason for putting the market shares in e-commerce is uh, and modern trade is obviously because they respond faster to any actions and this is an action that is only about uh, six odd weeks uh, old and we're already seeing some some green shoots uh, and we're committed to building palm olive across all the relevant channels in the relevant stores over the next foreseeable future and we think we have tremendous opportunity over there the second part of your question on disruption in uh, body wash i think the the lovely thing about having a category which is sub 3% penetration is that there is enough opportunity for everybody mm-hmm. to grow in different spaces so there mm-hmm. is an opportunity of course at the bottom of the pyramid by offering value uh, and there is equally if an, an equal if not larger opportunity at the top of the pyramid which is convincing consumers who have money that bathing with palm olive is indeed a superior experience to what they currently experience so i think there's enough room and enough opportunity for everybody to grow and so less worried about what other people are doing uh, in this segment in terms of uh, of disruption we're also very very confident about the tech- technology that we have on palm olive and therefore the ability to deliver an end experience which is truly uh, superior on the first question on protex and sanex uh, i should have put on the image there for presentation only we have a short form in colgate which is called fpo uh, for presentation only and that is exactly what uh, what that is it's not an indication of us doing protex and or sanex but uh, i can only say that watch this space and then we will have some news in terms of what we believe is the right thing for us to borrow from our global portfolio and introduce in india and to the question on growth i'm going to leave it to jacob Yeah, so on growth, personal care grow, is growing at a faster clip than oral care and we continue to expect the growth to further accelerate and widen the growth difference as we go into the following quarters. Sure, thanks. thanks. Uh, that's useful. Uh, just one small follow-up on the, the palm olive mass media advertising. Uh, uh, would you have a uh, benchmark in terms of what kind of share of mind uh, Uh, share a voice etc you would like to target because this is a under invested brand for uh, almost 2 3 decades so upfront advertising will be needed so uh, in, in the channels where you are focusing initially will you have a significant kind of a number in terms of share of voice so i think the way we measure uh, these kind of campaigns is really what is the reach that we wish to deliver and how what is the best way to deliver that reach so what you see as the mass media advertising is the only the tip of the iceberg in terms of what we are spending on palm olive a lot of it is actually going behind influencer marketing behind digital campaigns and in store which is really the bulk of our spends on palm olive so if you take your uh, what you see on mass media and multiply it by uh, a few you that is the expenditure on palm olive and like i said we are fully and utterly committed to driving palm olive and the joy of having uh, a pnl shape like the kind that we do is that we have the wherewithal to be able to do this so thanks uh, my second question is on the e-commerce uh, section uh, so uh, currently most of the consumer companies are broadly in the 6 to 10% uh, kind of a e-commerce percentage and within that quick commerce is around 25 to 30% so if you could tell us uh, in this category and for the company how are numbers yes uh, mr roy may i request you to join yeah, back the queue please yes may i request you to join back the queue sure, please sure. yeah thank you okay thank you before we take the next question would like to remind participants audio participants present on webcast may click on ask a video question tab available on the screen Participants connected via telephone may enter star and one on their phone to ask a question. We'll take our next question from Amit Sajdeva. Mr. Sajdeva, please accept the prompt on your screen. Turn on your audio and video and go ahead with your question.
Mr. Sajdeva, please turn on your audio. Yes, I have. Uh, am I audible? Yes, please yes, go ahead. Are. Good morning. Yeah, hi. Th Good morning, Prabha. Thanks so much. And uh, first of all, congratulations for excellent performance during the year. And, and delivering on uh, good cost management, revenue growth, and earning expansion. The question, obviously, an analyst asks is how to look into the future. You know, it has been a great year. So with that, I just want to ask, uh, you know, a couple of questions there. Uh, I assume that last year was a lot of pricing. And obviously, initiative of premiumization, but also simultaneously developing the market. Uh, could you help us understand uh, in the double digit, nearly double digit full year growth, what has been the volume mix uh, and pricing element? And as we go into the next year, right, how do you see these elements shaping up? Right, that's one. Uh, and uh, so maybe let me just, uh, you know, I, I, you know you, if you sort of reply to this one, then I probably link it back. So I think uh, I want to maybe break up your question into two parts in terms of do we see potential for this category to grow and for us to grow within this category and what will make that happen? Because that's really your question saying, how are we going to sustain this kind of nine and a half percent growth? Uh, and I think the answer to that actually lies in the fact that the if you expand the category, the greatest gains will come to the category leader. Uh, and that is really why 1A of our strategy is to focus on expanding the category. Uh, and that's one of the th reasons why we are very, very optimistic that we can grow this category. And as we grow this category, we will be able to grow our volumes as well and our value uh, as well. And of course, then there is the, we haven't even begun to scratch the surface in terms of what we do on premiumization. Just to, I didn't talk about it because I've said it before, but just to remind you of some of the numbers, only 12% of this category sits above the 140 index. That number for other personal care categories is already 30% plus. And even amongst SCCA, the penetration of a premium toothpaste, and I'm calling anything above 140 index of premium toothpaste is only at 28%. So even amongst those who have money, only one in four buy a premium toothpaste. So the opportunity to then convince them of the superior offerings uh, that exist in our portfolio is exceedingly high. So very optimistic about our ability to grow this category and therefore continue to grow our volumes and, and our value. Uh, to the second part of your question of do we want to break it up, uh, we tend not to break up the number uh, just in terms of, uh, of, of you know, what we're looking at though is a balanced growth between price and volume as we go forward. Uh, so price, volume and mix, these are the three things that obviously go into it and we'd look at roughly a balanced growth between all of them and to the underlying question of do we have the ability to take more pricing, uh, actually, price is always an outcome of what is the value that you're delivering or what is the benefit that the consumer sees uh, and therefore what is she willing to pay. And as long as we keep enhancing the benefit that we're delivering to consumers, I think this brand has potential to take pricing. So not, I, I think actually all of the vectors are ability to take pricing, ability to expand the market and ability to drive premiumization. I'm quite confident about all three of them. You know, that's very helpful. So I obviously without any guidance, I can sort of see that, uh, you know, where you are alluding to, we'll, we'll make our own sense of it. Uh, just to follow up a bit, you, you mentioned that there's a large uh, space in premium. But then, you know, if you map the price curve of mostly consumer categories, there's a prestige price point, mastige and premium. Oral care has not yet the prestige part of it. Uh, I'm sure there's a consumer ready for the best in class and nothing can be better in the world kind of pricing as well. Uh, but no brand has, at least in oral care, has attempted that, you know, the prestige part of oral care. Do you think about developing that market as well or it's too early for India to sort of get into that zone? Uh, so I was just very curious. Amit, I must tell you that there is nothing about oral care that we don't think about. Uh, and so I think uh, from a perspective of is there opportunity and if we, you know, if we were to put some numbers to where prestige with switch, so let me in skincare, obviously the numbers are extremely high, but if we were to say 400, 500 index would be, even that would be considered as prestige in the, in the toothpaste category. Yes, there is most mm -hmm. certainly an opportunity in this country. 
uh, and there is an opportunity that exists already and I think that we are in a position to start looking at these kind of opportunities. But the large bulk of premiumization will continue to come from the, you know, 50 to 100 percent premium kind of range rather than us stretching it all the way out to 400, 500, because that then becomes a very small uh, audience. So opportunity exists. Uh, I think the larger opportunity exists at the more traditional definition of premiumization. Uh, thanks so much, Prabha. Uh, my second Mr. Sajdeva, yeah, I sorry. request you to join back the queue, please. Okay, but thanks so much for taking my questions. Much Thank appreciated. You. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take our next question from Jay Doshi from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, hi, Prabha. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, you know, my, uh, I have a request and uh, one question. The request is if you could, I heard your response earlier, but if you could introduce either volume growth or UVG in your quarterly disclosures. And the reason for this request is, first of all, all other FMCGs share that metric. Even Colgate Global does share that metric. So I feel that is an important metric for investors and analysts to evaluate the progress in terms of volume growth and uh, you know the results of the efforts that you are taking this year. Uh, so that's a request. And secondly, even if you don't disclose, the problem is that there is a lot of noise in the media and wrong numbers get circulated within the community it creates more confusion. That's my request. Now my question is on Colgate Total. I think you mentioned that the category, you know, that brand was much larger earlier, and you are hoping that it restores back to the earlier levels. So could you be, uh, elaborate a little bit on it in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, what uh, what was the size of the brand or what was its salience in overall Colgate sales earlier? What is it right now? and uh, uh, some some additional color if you can provide. Sure, thanks Jai. Firstly, uh, on your request, uh, let me just take it back and we'll come back to you. But at the moment, we tend not to provide that and so I'm gonna move on from there so as to not uh, repeat myself. Uh, on Colgate Total, uh, this brand has existed in the country for quite a while uh, and about a decade ago, it actually used to be a double digit share player in modern trade. Uh, albeit in a smaller modern trade category and therefore had significant salience to premium consumers. And it will be our effort to take it back into that kind of space where at least in the channels of the future and in select uh, general trade uh, uh, stores, it continues to start edging towards that kind of level. So that would really be where our planning and our thinking is. And why we believe we can do that is uh, for me to just since you've given me the opportunity to talk about Total, to just spend a little bit of time on the technology on Total, which is this combination of dual zinc plus arginine, which actually delivers best in class 12 hour antibacterial protection. And all of us know that actually bacteria is at the root of all uh, oral health issues. And this particular product of ours has backed by 125 patents, which is more than I think any toothpaste in the world that any company offers. And therefore, very confident about the technology that this toothpaste offers, the benefit that it offers to consumers, and why it is the flagship of our uh, premiumization strategy. Sure. Thank, uh, thanks so much. Just uh, if I can ask, uh, you know, where, where is total today in terms of salience after in, at the end of FY24? Yeah, it, I mean, uh, Prava mentioned we were double digit in modern trade uh, in, um, when we were big on total a few years back. But since then, modern trade is low single digit. But e -com has been a big story and e -com, uh uh, you know, is the fastest uh, moving in terms of premiumization for us, and their total is a uh, sizable player already. Thank you so much, and wish you the very best for FY25. Thank you. Thank you. We'll read a text question from Percy Pantaki from IIFL. Can you please break up your sales growth for Q4 into volume? mix and price same for fy24 full year also given that pricing will anniversary soon how should we look at your sales growth over the next few quarters thank you yeah hi percy so uh, you know uh, uh, 
uh, Prabha mentioned on the volume piece, we are not uh, splitting volume and pricing. Um, and so we won't comment on that as of now. Uh, going forward, you're right, uh, as inflation moderates, uh, pricing will be an uh, important discussion. But we do expect uh, the uh, category growth, consumption growth activities that we have initiated, along with positive macros in rural that we are seeing, uh, you know, rural grew faster than urban and we continue to see, uh, see green shoots there. So, uh, you know, co combination of that along with premiumization would be key for us. Uh, to uh, continue to deliver the current level of growth. Thank you. We'll take a video question from Mihir Shah. Mr. Shah, please accept the prompt on your screen. Turn on your audio and video and go ahead with your question, please. Mr. Shah, can you please turn on your video as well? Hi, good morning, Prabha. I hope I'm audible. Good morning. Yes, Are please you? go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for taking my question and congrats on a great uh, margin delivery. Uh, Prabha, my first question is on margins, actually. Uh, uh, apart from pricing and better mix, you mentioned there is a continuous uh, cost saving initiative that is improving the margins both on gross and on a beta level. Uh, how much more juice do you think? Uh, we have uh, that we can take out from the cost, uh, you know, uh, side, which can keep uh, taking these margin profiles higher. Uh, I'm sure, you know, we are quite an efficient company and I'm sure there is a lot of uh, zero based budgeting that you guys will do. Uh, but for us to understand where the gross margins can really, you know, uh, stack at from, you know, some, uh, somewhere from 69, 70 percent levels, maybe in the next few years time where can it really settle down only from the cost saving side i understand the premiumization side but from from that side maybe you can help us understand so that's question number one so i think uh, firstly uh, i don't think it is our effort to massively expand margins uh, as we go forward like i said our focus is really on looking at our cost lines with a view to saying what is non-value adding cost and can we suck that non-value adding cost out of the system and yes we are an exceedingly efficient company but there is always room for more efficiency things evolve technologies evolve markets evolve thinking evolves uh, lots of you know india's capability evolves many many things move which allow us every year to have new opportunities to suck out non-value adding costs. So I think this ability to generate around, you know, four or five percent of net sales as uh, as gross saving uh, is something that I think we can continue into the foreseeable future, given that things will will keep moving. Uh, the question of how much of that becomes a margin expansion and how much of that we use to funnel back into driving better quality products, better packaging, uh, I, I think that's really the, the key question for us. And our effort will be to make sure that we are judiciously using the sources of funds uh, into uses that allow us to drive our, our top line up. So if you are looking for a perspective on our margins going to continue to expand at the rate that they have between last year and this year, the answer is most definitely not. Uh, it will. I think that is more a one-off expansion that you're seeing. Our effort will be to be in and around uh, the ballpark of where we are currently. Understood. That clarifies. Uh, second question, Prabha. Uh, I just want a clarification. You mentioned that nine and a half percent growth rate is a sustainable growth rate uh, that we should assume uh, on overall basis. Uh, is that a correct understanding? I don't recall mentioning that. I do recall mentioning that uh, I think there is tremendous growth opportunity in this category and that will be our focus. But uh, I certainly not giving a guidance on the on the number. Got it. Understood. Uh, what I really wanted to understand, I understand you're not breaking the price uh, and the volume, but maybe you can give some sense on the mix that we are seeing. Is there a mix improvement that is I'm sure there is a mix improvement that is a part of this, uh, would it be in low single digits? Uh, can that inch up to higher single digits uh, later on? Or do you think this uh, mix improvement of low single digits of a uh, couple of percentage points will continue uh, here? Uh, ju just a clarification on that also, please. 
So I think uh, the way we look at it is to have a growth rate target for our premium portfolio relative to our core portfolio. And at this moment, uh, our target would be to be at least two and a half, three times faster with our premium portfolio than our base portfolio. And at this time, we're exceeding that target. And really, given the plans that we have line of sight of for the rest of this year, we can see that continuing to be the case. So whether it is Colgate Total or it is Visible White with its innovations and the, the work that has been done on communication or it is the push into therapeutics uh, that is gaining momentum we do see an opportunity for this you know 3x growth rate at least uh, of the rest of the portfolio to continue and that will keep adding uh, to mix and that's really what we're focused on rather than a measure of what percentage of the mix uh, is it uh, got it thank you very much and wishing you all the very best thank you very much thank you We'll take a last question from the line of Vishal Punmiya from Yes Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on strong margin performance as well as working capital improvement in FI24. Uh, my only question is on uh, rural markets. The first time that we had highlighted green shoots was in August last year. Now, this quarter, almost every company is kind of calling out the improvement in rural markets. Uh, the question is, is it just because of base effect or is there any major uh, improvement that you are seeing in consumption for uh, your category? And uh, with this improvement, uh, with rural picking up, do we expect uh, the premiumization-led growth uh, to be slightly slower in FI25 versus FI24 while uh, volume growth improves for you? Uh, yeah, that uh, that will be my only question. So, thank you. That's a great question, Vishal, for us to uh, end this session with. Uh, so, what we are seeing in this quarter is rural is uh, outpacing urban growth by close to 200 basis points, which is great news for us because there is so much opportunity to grow this category. Uh, the reasons behind that, and we are, I guess, in the same boat as everybody else, as we give this reason, saying that there are macroeconomic indicators that rural is coming back, lots of categories are coming back, as are we. Uh, from a more internal perspective of what we have done, we have doubled down on our execution and communication in rural. So we have gone deeper and wider with the communication that we have, and obviously this supported by the increase in product quality and packaging quality of uh, of the, our flagship brand, which is the largest brand in rural, which is Coral Gate Strong Teeth, uh, really does help our rural growths. So that's kind of what is happening as far as the rural market is concerned. And obviously, all of the indicators, the macro indicators that we are hearing in terms of what the monsoon will be like, a general feeling of optimism in the rural market suggests to us that this is something that is sustainable, uh, along with the stabilization of inflation, that this is a sustainable growth, at least for the foreseeable future. On your second piece on will the rural growth preclude the premiumization growth, I don't think so because these are actually quite independent and therefore in the way that we look at it, it is more an and thought than an or thought that where we had already a premiumization engine as we discussed that was working and driving towards greater growth uh, being driven largely by better off consumers in urban India, uh, the rural growth will now become an and on top of it. So we will see a combination of A plus B, which should certainly help growth uh, going forward. Understood. Good to hear that. Uh, and best of luck uh, for FI25. Thank you very much. Thank you. I now hand the conference back to Ms. Sujata Nairi for closing comments. Over to you. Thank you, Ajit uh, Thank you, Prabha and Jacob, for your thoughts and uh, insights. Uh, and thank you everyone for joining us. We are very excited for the year coming by and looking forward to hosting all of you again. Thanks you once again on behalf of the entire Colgate team and we just close the analysis call now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We now conclude today's Colgate Palmolive Analyst Conference Meet and we thank you all for your participation.